Hello everyone and welcome back. So today is Sunday and we just got back from Las Vegas. We had a blast. It's very warm out there this time of year. <laughs> but today was a pretty full travel day. Got up at like 3.15 or 3.20. Got to the airport by 4.15. Got on our plane. That The airport there was way backed up today. We almost didn't make it. Um, our flight was at like 6.30 and we almost didn't make it. Flew back here with the two hour time change. Um, we Two hours ahead, so we didn't get here till 11 or 11.30. We made good time though because we had a hundred over 100 mile an hour tailwind pushing us. We're going like 600 and something miles an hour. And then we had to drive. We got picked up at the airport by my father-in-law. Drove us back to their place where Rose was staying, which was like an hour, hour and a half. And then from there, it was another three, let's see, we left there at two, and we got here at six. So, <laughs> to a lot of drive time. Anyways, now we're back in the garage, and these are some of the keepsakes that my grandfather has made so this here was just a fun little thing I think I fit I think I um, debarked this chunk of wood and fit it in here and he kinda of finished it off with his signature leather wrap so that was really cool and then this I made the tang and he put the handle on here with this gold maple leaf and then as you guys know the most prized position that I have of his is that 10 foot canoe up top. So I'm going to get these hung up. One here and I believe one there. That way they're off the bench and uh, they're just little keepsakes of mine. So we'll get it hung up kind of as a, you know, I had them, I, I had them up at the last place. And I'm going to have them up at this place too. So. Okay, so today we ran to Menards and picked up a bunch of stuff here for the house and for the boat. I got these 5 16 hose clamps and I do have a few different types of fuel clamps but being that this has a primer bulb I wanted to make sure that the two connection points were extremely tight because I don't need this popping off and spraying fuel everywhere. Uh, out in the lake. I don't want to. I don't want to deal with it. So oh, we're going to uh, get these reattached, get them tightened up, and then we'll move on to the boat. We got new lights for it today. A tongue jack. Um, oh yeah, the new safety chains. We'll kind of go over that in a little bit. While we were away in Vegas, we got a nice rainstorm and all this rain collected in the front. And so my five gallon bucket isn't tall enough to get the boat pitched back enough where it'll just run out. And during the fishing season, I do want to park this thing ready to go in the garage. But in the meantime, at Menards, I got one of these jacks, and this is the same exact one I have on the utility trailer, which is coming super handy. So, 10 to 22 inch, and I, I still don't know if that's going to be enough, but it might be. We'll find out. But I'm going to get that mounted down here first, because I need to get that water out so I can vacuum it. I want to refinish these seats and stuff too, but we need to get it pitched up enough. And then also... Like, I don't have the greatest back, so lifting this thing up and setting it down is really hard on me. And so um, putting on this trailer jack will help with that, too, because then I don't have to break my back trying to lift it. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, so this is this is what it looks like. Just kind of Now you can see how much higher that is. And it's already draining, which is good. So now the water can drain all the way through. One of the really nice things about this house is we pay for water every quarter, but it's unmetered. So you can actually use your water how you want to. While we wait here for the water to drain, let's take off this old, these are the safety chains. Used to be hooked here. There's a spot up on the front, this hole. Used to be hooked there, but for whatever reason, they hooked them back here with this, uh, I can't remember what you'd call this, kind of a carabiner style thing, but it doesn't even open up enough to go over the safety latches on the, the, the trailer tow bar so what's wrong with this is if the trailer comes off the ball these are supposed to catch it and normally you know you'd cross them so this would fall down onto them all this is gonna do is gonna put so much pressure down it'll plow the tongue into the ground and uh, you really have a mess then so We are going to get this off of here. These were $18.99 at Menards. These are just 2,000 pounds, but this that'll be more than enough. And uh, this is the kind I like to run. So I like them when they have the clip, clip on them. Um, we used to live by that highway, so I could tell you many stories of what a vehicle would drive by, and this would be dragging. Um, so this helps, because it'll lock in on your uh, on your safety chain hooks, it locks in on there. And um, the one thing I don't care for whenever I get these is they just put it on one chain and that's okay, I guess, but I like to cut it and have two separate points because otherwise when you go to crisscross the chains, it gets a little, I don't know, I just don't feel like it's the same quality. So what we're gonna do probably later is we'll re-drill a hole the original one was right here. We even had a little ground here. Um, we'll re-drill a hole just back here and um, get these cut and attach it with a, a bolt. Also, you can see that there has been some welding work done. So something had, has happened to this thing. Probably involved the safety chains and a lot because this whole thing is kind of smushed. So, I mean, this thing fell off at some point in time or something happened to it, but I don't like the way these welds look. Um, I don't like how this looks either, but I'm going to drill and at least get a bolt on each side of these. Um, I like to do that so that if the weld cracks, at least I have something that's going to like half hold it on. But yeah, something has happened here. And um, you can really see it on this side. Something's happened. So. I don't know that story, but all I know is that I can uh, fix it and make it better. But so we got the old lights off of here, and uh, I was going to try to salvage these, but this one was all busted. But these are submersible trailer lights. The problem being is that they have bulbs in them, and every time I get these type of trailer lights, they just die so fast. And they already have a pretty short life because of the fact that I constantly smash trailer lights off of trailers. But um, these ones, I was just, I was going to hot glue it, but I thought, you know what, I don't want to mess with this for the next forever. So uh, this one was pretty good. Uh, but yeah, they're just, I just don't like regular ones. So 
I got some LEDs. Uh, 55 bucks at Menards. I guess a person could re drill the holes in and then you'd have that, but I'm not super concerned. I think it'll be alright. Okay, it's the next day. So you know we got the motor put on last night and today I'm just gonna be kind of outfitting it and digging through my stuff. I gotta get a life jacket and just some other stuff. I do have to mix up some gas for this as well so I will have to uh, do that but and I have to test fire it because I want to go fishing with it tomorrow so <laughs> we'll uh, start working on some of that stuff. Okay, so I went to fill up this gas tank and <laughs> it starts just leaking everywhere and then I see in this nice little, uh, whatever you can say, this crack going all the way across. So that's great. Maybe one here too. <sighs> so, luckily I had a tarp in the van. I was able to put it on the tarp while it leaked all the way home. And then I had to run back and picked up this and we're gonna try to salvage this tank so we already spent a fair amount of money putting the fittings and stuff on there so let's see if we can salvage this thing i'm sure someone's gonna say why didn't you use flex seal well didn't say anything about petroleum this one here I can at least find stuff online that people have used it on plastic gas tanks, so I'm gonna imagine that it works. Alright, so our gas tank patch from JB Weld seems to actually be working. It's not leaking. This thing it was tipped down, this thing was leaking, so I wrapped that in some of that uh, Teflon gas rated tape. It's working. Uh, what I need to do though is, I don't know if that's enough water, but we are going to try to start it anyways, even if it's just for a second, because just kind of need to know if it runs, and then we can worry about the rest of it another day. <laughs> but this thing hasn't ran in, I don't even know how long, so we're just going to start it for a second and see.
because I took the lower unit off. And when you take it off, there's one, this nut, and behind that there's a spline. That's about the same height. If you take a pliers, you can move it. It has three positions. One's reverse, one's forward, and one is neutral. So I found the neutral, which is the one where it'll spin. And I put this in neutral. And I put it back together, which sounds easy, but putting this thing back together sucks because everything has to line up. Once it's back together, now in neutral, it has the safety. It can't rev up very much, okay? And what that is, if you're going to look on here, let me get this thing right here. So right here, you'll see when I turn this, it hits. When I put it in forward gear, you'll see it disengage. See it move? That little piece right there. That pulls back just enough where now it can rev up all the way. See how much movement's in there? Put it back in neutral. That piece moved. Put it in reverse. You can rev up all the way. So that's how that works. And I think we got it dialed in now, but it's probably 9 o'clock at night. So <laughs> I'm not going to start this thing up and rev it up and wake up all the neighbors or annoy all the neighbors so no big deal there but what I am going to do is get a battery charger on the battery get my trolling motor taken out and put on here which it looks like they had theirs right there and uh, just kind of slowly go and get some stuff on there I am super oily so we'll see how far I get but uh, should be should be good um, yeah, this kid's so cool. Um, fat tire bike. Anyways, this is the oil I got, this Valvoline 2 cycle. Should be good. And, uh, I'm going to spray this down with carb cleaner to get all this gunky junk out of there. And then I'll respray it with something else. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, if you guys hear a lot of hooping and hollering in my videos, that's the, there's like three or four kids. And they're always just having a blast over there. And, uh. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna complain about motorbikes or kids having fun because they deserve to have fun. I actually enjoy it. I would rather have that than when we lived in St. Cloud we were next to that drug house and there's always boom boom music and uh, swearing. I'd rather have kids playing. <laughs> Alright. Let's get this thing cleaned up and kinda continue on here. Good morning everyone. So we are back here in the basement and we are taking apart this cabinet that was down here so as you might remember they left us this cabinet and two more cabinets stacked on top of each other over there and what sam and i want to do today is get some black shelves that we have put in here for canned food and other things that we just don't use every day and that way the pantry upstairs can be, uh, you know, more everyday food items or stuff we bring up there. You know, we could probably store a couple weeks of food in that pantry upstairs, but we like to have a little bit more than that just in case. So uh, that is why I have a Sawzall. And we are going to Sawzall part this thing and carry it out in pieces. And then from there, bring down the black shelves that I have and put them up and we'll have a nice little storage spot also today I, we, we are going to finish rose's room just hanging up her pictures and after that i want to get that linen closet finished if i can or at least work on it a little bit and we'll probably finish out the day with working on rose's new swing set so it's kind of the plan for today. I'll set you guys up and I'm going to get to saws on.
this light was meant for the garage, but we're gonna use it in here instead. We just bought it yesterday. I got my little bulb socket here, so it'll work off of the same switch. And the best way to mount these is not on the back here. Um, I had mounted my old garage lights like this where you slide it in. I actually had the one fall and hit my car, scraped all the paint off because it went corner down. Now, I don't even know why. Those just fell off. Um, so now, I'll show you the best way, and that is drill a hole right through the center and just put a sheetrock screw through it. And I'm just gonna mount it right here. I'll mount it uh, probably on that one and that one. And we'll just plug it in right there. Ready? Ah, so much better. Does it work on the switch? Oh, yes, it does. Look at that. Now we got way more light in here. Beautiful. Okay, we got the shelf put up. I shifted it over so it's not in front of that window. It's good though. The top three we can easily put canned food on and it'll be eye level so you can see what's happening. In the bottom you can put some bigger things but what I want you to keep in mind is this door is going to be disappearing. So um, we're going to just build that in as a wall. And so I could have a storage shelf here and two here. Right? And then what else to keep in mind is this will be walled off here. So right now there's an independent switch. This switch will be, I'm going to, I think, put it with the other switch so when you flick on the light, this whole room lights up. I'll probably put another four foot LED in here. And then when you come downstairs, you'll have to come through the utility room. And in here, those are getting dismantled and brought out. This whole thing is getting dismantled and brought out. The dryer used to sit here, I guess, is what I was told. But when you come in here, um, I, what I would really like to do is take out this giant sink, because we have no need for, for it, and put in just a single. And then this, I'm going to 180 it, or 90 it, so that it opens outward and probably shift it as far over this way as I can and then just run the pipe up and down for the vent. This being gone, that being gone, this will be open so you can have even more shelving in here. Probably two more. You could probably do two more if you needed it here. But then you'll come through here and this will be more um, storage. So you could have one, two, three, four, If you wanted to, you could have like five, six, seven, eight, if you really needed that much space. But that's kind of the plan for now, at least, as you get this stuff ripped out. We did get the pictures hung up in here. We're missing one. So we have two left, but it goes with that one, and we don't really know how we want to do it yet. But we got her Disney. Her Dr. Seuss and a couple other animals. Having a hard time finding a curtain for this because it's the window is two feet and curtains either come in really long lengths or short lengths but we do have one that was kind of like a fancy one that kind of goes across the top and we haven't found it yet. I've seen it I just can't remember where I seen it and uh, that's probably gonna go there but until then we have to replace that window anyways so I just taped that up <laughs> but it's coming along good and eventually when she's out of her crib phase the bed is gonna pivot and go against that wall so that's why it's a little bit higher just because she should be done with the crib here probably in the next few months 
Now we're back on this dark closet. It's really hard to film it, but I think it's important to try to film it because it is gonna make a huge difference here. So I cut the pieces, or actually I had to run to Menards and get a second piece because I estimated it wrong. But now let's see if this piece will slide in there. Actually, one idiot. Let's see if we can get this piece in. Pretty confident that this one will slide in here. Yep. Oh yeah. Alright, so we have two shelves in, working our way up to the top. Oh yeah, and the quarter rounds in, and the stuff up top is in too. You can see I got the piece in there, and it ends. That's the width I had, but from out here, you'll never see it. So it's just a good little, cleans it up and hides it good, so works for me. I don't want to talk about the seam. I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> we'll see when the shelf goes over if I can still see it. I'll put a little cheater piece in there, some caulking or something. I don't want to talk about that. My measurement was wrong. i tell you what it is. I, the top piece was supposed to be on the bottom and then it would have all lined up right. But I have them flip flopped. So this seam is lower, no higher by like two inches than it should be. So then I cheated everything to try to cover it, but my <laughs> cheat measurement was wrong. I needed to cheat it down two inches, not up two inches. So now everything's, it's spaced out right, but it's just, I still couldn't salvage it apparently, but that's fine. We'll make do with what we got. Put the half shelf on the top so that we can get up and in there. Uh, if it was all the way out, you really wouldn't be able to. Now, I'm just going to measure these distances and put the uh, front pieces on, and we should be good. Funny thing is, the actual wall isn't square because you can see it's pretty tight and about a quarter inch maybe a little more so that's kind of interesting but I'll just measure the width here and we'll just put these pieces in except for the top one that one can be full width but uh, I like it I think Sam will love it and uh, we'll be able to put all sorts of stuff in here and it'll look real good and clean All I need is to get a little bit of wood putty filler to fill in those uh, little nail holes, but it's complete. I'll put up a before and after so you guys can see, but uh, I'd say that that looks pretty good. You filling it up? Yeah. Hey, where is the What is that, Buggy? Is that 
Can you show everybody a booty bounce? Nice. <laughs> Can I come up? In a little bit, okay. Come on, Daddy. We're coming right along to give you an idea of the height. This is a six foot ladder. So it's about nine feet tall probably. But uh, the way it sits, slide on the front, monkey bars to the left, um, swings to the right. Okay, we uh, got these all hooked up. These little corner brackets, and you gotta screw them in, bolt them. So there was 12 of them. Well, we got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. And that really did add a lot of strength. There is another few bags of these, so maybe they go up higher or something. But uh, yeah. Okay, we have a little bit of time here after lunch, so jump back out here. I did have to put one cross, remember, right here. And then these ones are the deck that'll sit up on top. And then this last one I just had to pound in because it's really tight. They're 35 and 7 eighths, which I find surprising that it's 7 eighths because some of these 28 and a halfs were 28 and a quarter. So. Kind of interesting to have such a tight tolerance on those specific parts. But anyways, we're going to get this deck put on there. And then, I don't know what the next step is, but we'll get to it. Okay, I've put in quite a bit of effort tonight. So first of all, I got all these handles changed so that they're regular. I stole them off those extra cabinets downstairs. Put up my No Stupid People sign. These two have been with me forever, although this one needs a coat of lacquer or whatever. I want to sand that off because that's from the other people. Um, got this hung up, and when Rosie was helping me the other day, well a few weeks ago, she brought these dinosaur things, the little poppets, so I hung those up because that's her little thing. This is also her artwork that was in the last garage. I cut this back. And got my cabinet in here, which was amazing. And then hung up all the stuff on the wall that was hung up on the wall at the last place. Except for that Fat Max, like four footer. They left that here for me, which was sweet. And then I got these down below. Some more up high. I gotta reorganize this a little better. So it is the next day. My battery and card both ran out last night. But we spent some time. We got... Uh, the bench looking a lot better. We got the cabinet in here. And then towards the end of the night, I was just over here working on stacking up the bottom. I do want to remove these shelves, but I have to uh, get stuff kind of where I can see what's going on. So today we ran into town, went to Menards again, but we just laid Rose down for a nap, and I want to show you guys what I am thinking is the problem with this boat. Because I did more uh, research on it with this engine, and I think I might have Here's an idea. five boxes. But that's, I think, there's just one more box in there. Let me show you guys the basement. So here we have a little bit of our food. And boxes of things that we need to go through yet like clothes for Rose and I don't know what else is in these totes but what we need to do today is bust these cabinets apart so we need to get these cabinets taken apart that way we can stack up those boxes against the wall here because I'm really getting an itch to uh, 
get that garage kind of cleaned, if that makes sense, or get the van parked in there. I want to clean the van and get it parked inside because that's where I like it to be and I want that boat to be in there too. This cabinet also needs to go. This is kind of some nice wood, so I don't know if we'll bang it apart or take it apart nicely. Alright. Here. Luckily, all we gotta do is reach into our convenient little spot here. Whoa, we're back. Right. Oh, it's out. And once that dries, we can figure out what to do from there. So, with all of that cleaning work downstairs, we were finally able to get the furniture down there. So now, this evening, I'm just going to work on kind of getting this picked up a little more. And, uh, I want to push the chest freezer against the wall by that fridge, and um, obviously like my amp and stuff still needs to go down, but I've been waiting to get to this point for a few weeks now, so it feels really rewarding. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think I'm going to put on my tunes and jam out in here, so I'll give you guys an update in a little bit.